start with the F800 by Thinkware, as well as the hardwiring accessory kit right there. You've probably seen the unboxing already. If you haven't, go check that out. I'll put a link in the description. We're about to do an install on this baby, hardwire it into the fuse box in the trunk. We're not gonna mess with going to the fuse box in the front. In these 2015 to 2018 Challengers, you have a fuse box in the trunk as well. So we're gonna route the wires all the way up around the headliner and into the back, put this under the mirror, and we should be good to go. The unboxing goes over the full specs, but I'll just go over a couple things here. 1080p, 30 frames per second. Got a Sony Exmor R Starvis image sensor. The Super Night Vision 2.0, apparently this camera is really good at night. Beating camera alerts, road safety warning systems, all kinds of cool things in here, but you have to do the hardwire installation in order to access all of that and access the parking mode and things like that so we're gonna do this install here shouldn't take too long stick around check it out here we go so here's the green hornet we're out here at the ranch right now green hornet is super dirty i had to kind of drive down here off of the road a little bit in order to get in the sun because as you can see there is shade everywhere over there and i was losing my natural light even when she's dirty she looks good let's do this install throw it in there hopefully it's not too complicated links in the description for all the other associated videos and all the products and everything let's get to it before we get started here let's go over everything that's going to happen okay so the thinkware f800 itself is going to be placed right up under here if you look closely there's a sensor in the top right corner of that housing for your wires on your mirror you do not want to cover that sensor that's how it tells if it's night or daytime you need to leave that open be aware of that from there we're going to take the wire route it up around that housing through the headliner and the top if you open up the car here see this housing right here we'll run the cables through that up through the headliner here around to this side and this crease from that crease into this rubber lining this leads straight into your headliner we'll be pushing it in there following that line all the way back into the trunk area then as we get back to the trunk when you lift this up there's all the cleaning supplies if you look here's your battery this box right there that's a fuse box that's where we're going to run it to underneath the carpet in here shouldn't be too complicated so let's get to it go over the thinkware dash cam accessory hardwiring cable i'll put the link in the description on amazon i think it was about 25 bucks not too bad nothing too special there is the thinkware seal again but if you get in here Just basic cable. It's got a couple inline fuses and your power ground and remote start. And that's it. There's also some other things you're going to need. Cables that they send you are not long enough. So you'll need wire to extend it. Some tape. I picked up some heat, heat shrink. And you'll also need some general pliers for stripping the wire and cutting the wire. There's everything you're gonna need to accomplish the install. Now that we've taken a look at all that, let's get in the car and let's mount the camera and start running wires. So the sun is just going crazy right now. We have our Thinkware F800 right here. We are going to look for a good mounting location and mount it at the top as our first step. We'll go right there. Should look good. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna try to get the camera there to where you can see it. I can't see it, so hopefully you can see it. There's a sensor right up here. You wanna make sure you do not cover that up. That's the only thing you're gonna worry about. Now, if you watch the unboxing, which I'll put a link in the description for, you will know that you got a mounting piece in your box and an extra 3M adhesive, as well as the one that comes on right here. So we're going to put this in. You can see the slots right there where it fits. We'll put it in there, mount it up. It's that easy. We've got these two pieces. Slide it on, push it over, and it should lock into place. Take it off, you slide it that way and pull it right back off. This is your orientation. Just fit it in the groove and slide it over. Now we want to make sure we find a good spot to put this. Don't want it super visible. You also don't want it to block that sensor. Won't be able to put it that close. But I think maybe if we get down here with it, it might be okay. So let's check it out. Let's go to the front and see. Yeah, it looks, looks like there's some room there. We're gonna do it. We're gonna go for it. You go to the passenger side, you have enough room to get up in front, take a look. So obviously we can't put it there. I don't know, that might work. I do have an extra one of these, so we're just gonna see what happens. This 3M tape is very hard to peel. Oh, it's stuck pretty hard on the edges there. There we go. We are now exposed. We'll go ahead and take that off as well. And we want to get it straight. That looks pretty good. Let me go to the other side. Okay, that is not very good at all actually <laughs> yeah so i suggest getting a second pair of eyes to line this up because it's pretty impossible to do on your own so i've got my mom pulling it. Yeah. 
Is it right below the sensor? No extra space? Yes. Is that good still? Yes. Still good? Yes. Still? Yeah, so I'm trying to squeeze. I am. I'm just... I could probably just do that. It's kind of what I'm doing. Well, it was hard and it took a long time of trial and error and going back and forth to get it straight, but I think we're happy with it. It's looking pretty good. The mom came through with the vision. The vision. Now we just pretty much have to run the wire, send it back through the trunk, and wire it up to the fuse box. Allie's making a, a run for it. Got the camera mounted. Confusing and hard to get it mounted properly and in the right spot and everywhere you want it. Turn your camera there. Nice little clicks and responsive. That's pretty cool. It's got a nice little white line on the side that lets you know where it is too. So now we know that our camera is pointing forward. Now that our camera is mounted up there, it's time to get this hard wiring kit and get to running these wires. You see these big ends right here? You obviously can't run this through your headliner and stuff. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna cut these off and then we're gonna extend it from there. And we're gonna leave these parts now next to the battery in the trunk. So we're just going to start by plugging it in on the other end here and starting to feed our wire through. We're going to be taking it from right here, right up into here, around into there, around here, down to this piece right here. See this flap under there all the way back. We'll start by putting this in. That way we get it done right. Now, I may not be able to hold a camera and do this, but I'm going to attempt to get this wire into this housing and we're gonna work from there. As you can see, we've gone from right there straight into this housing. You can see that right there. And we're working our way back. We're gonna head up to the headliner and then come back around in there. We've got our cable right here coming right off the top there. Now we can just follow all these other cables leads right into the headliner. Allie's over here being our handy helper on this install. Actually, this was a lot easier than I thought it would be. As you can see, we have our cable shoved up into the headliner here. I'm just working on this little last spot. It's a little tricky, but yeah, I mean, all up in here, it's it's past the seam and it's in there. Now I'm working on this corner here. We're coming around that corner, going into that pillar and following it around to this side here. Let's see if we can get that final piece pushed in there. If you had a little interior tool, this would be a little bit easier, but it's actually really not necessary. I mean, look at that. There it is. Now we just pull this back. See, you hear it click down in there? Now, you want to pull this piece back and start shoving it up inside there. We started here. We went right into here, and it just slides right into that housing. You follow the housing around to the top. You can see where the wire comes out there. Go straight into the headliner, all the way back. And you can pull this headliner down a little bit if you see that. Pull it down and shove it in there. Comes around there to the pillar here. And now we're here on this piece. So we'll keep working our way back to the trunk. Shove it in just like that. It rolls itself right in there. Now, you may not be able to see on the camera, but when you pull this back, there's another little edge here. That's where you want to be getting this up into. So you want to get it under the flap and then you want to push it back up under that edge and do that all the way back. It's been about 10 minutes and we're already to here. Making great progress. You see the cable hanging here. I've made it back all the way to this pillar. I have just started. We've inserted it into the, the B pillar right here. We have about this much. See here, we've got about this much left. Okay, so what I'm about to do is cut these right here and extend it so we can finish running our wires all the way back into the trunk. As you can see, we have cut that piece off and stripped our wires and there's our three pieces there. So now we're going to attach our extension wire and keep feeding it to the back until we get to the trunk. Looking good so far. And we have our wire right here. This is the only wire that they had for sale that would work. It's a little bigger. I didn't want to use 16 gauge, but it is what it is. It'll get the job done. So we got yellow, black, and red, just so I don't get confused after I run the wires all the way through, keeping the same color. We're going to match yellow to yellow, red to red, and black to black. So let's open it up and get it attached. As you can see, we have both of our wires, our new one and the one we're gonna connect to. Twist it up and you just wanna twist them together and tape them up. Kinda had to do a weird little tape job there in order to make it work right, but it works. So we're gonna move on to our next two wires and then we will keep running them back. You can see Allie right there as well. Now it may not look pretty. It is gonna get the job done. I wanted to make sure it was taped up nice and good since I was using tape. The connections were just too short to really use anything else. Got plenty of slack. 
now we can continue running it into the trunk. So I do want to talk about this again real quick. We're just continuing through this pillar and it really kind of has a crease. You can't see, but it has a crease going all the way back there. So we're just going to stuff it into there and then work our way into the trunk. So we're in the back now. We have the passenger side seat folded back. Gotten our cable all the way around from here, heading through this crease, and it is now right here. I was trying to decide if we should take it up this pillar and down the window or if we should continue here and down. And it looks like continuing here is perfect because there is a crease here as well as here that you can probably get into which will lead you right down to underneath the carpet which is exactly where we want to be so we're gonna run it there and I'll check back in when we have it run down there you know what gonna have to scratch that this crease right here you can't get into it so we are gonna have to go up and down the window and down around this side and then back down you can see as I said you can't run it out here it looks like it's coming out right here in this seam but it's not you have to come up this seam and then down around the window around the bottom and back to here it's actually very easy it's very loose back there it fit right in so now we're just gonna follow this seam down and into the bottom of the trunk you're gonna see a little bit of wire here that is because I only have this which is not a real interior tool I need a little interior tool to push this down this is just such a tight corner but it will get down in there same with right here there's a little clip I need something to pull that clip out so I can finish pushing in there. But the good news is when this is closed, it's not like any of that's visible anyway. There you go. We have now successfully run it down here. Okay. Now we're going to feed it up underneath this carpet and into our section in the trunk. Let's go back there and check it out. So we're going to open up the trunk here and do a little scouting. Now let's also pull this piece out. It's velcroed in here. Let's see if we can get it out. There we go. Hard to do this with one hand. Don't want to scratch the car. Okay. There's our harness. Here's our fuse box. So let's figure out how to get the wire back here, huh? I think if we come inside and pull this down, yep, just as I suspected, we can go right underneath this, no problem. Wow, it's way easier than I thought it would be. We got our cable, throwing it back there. I'm gonna send it underneath, just like that. Allie's sitting on the trunk thing. Like that, Allie? Plenty of extra link so let's go get our other ends slice them onto here and then we'll talk about our fuse box and what fuses that we're going to tap into again it's another pretty janky tape job because the feed is just so short that's pretty much all i had to work with so we got that one on we'll do the rest and then we'll hook it up to the fuse box we have our power on and our ignition back on as well like i said i know these don't look that pretty kind of the only way i could connect them with how short of a lead there was <laughs> let's talk instructions and fuses for a second so your acc is your red cable this one that says battery that's going to be your b plus continuous power your ground obviously is your black right there okay so right here it says your b plus which would be your yellow cable connect to fuse that is usually used for brake lights dome light or emergency light now this is covered with a case okay so when you first open this up this is going to look like this there's a little latch on the side here you push in and lift up and this comes off now you're looking at your fuses here they all have a number on them and there's also a diagram online that i will put a link in the description to the wiring diagram back or fuse box diagram Diagram back here is different. Looks like we're looking for F12. You see right there, ignition and B plus. Seems like it comes in the ignition spot. Yep, it's sitting at ignition right now. So we will put our ignition cable, which is our ACC, which is gonna be our red cable. It's marked here, ACC on the side. We'll put that into fuse 12. Now we have pulled our fuse out. It is fuse 12. It's in this spot right here. You also have your diagram here. It's this fuse right there that we just pulled. Now you're gonna wanna put it back in that position. You wanna get it right here. Use a little tool that they provide. It works perfect. You're gonna wrap that in around one of the ends of this on the bottom, down close to the plastic. That's all you're gonna do. Ah, oh, there we go, we got it. There you go. That's what you want. Now we'll put it back into our little fuse tool and we'll put it right back in the same position. And if you forget what position it was in, you can always refer back to here. Go ahead and drop it in, see how it works. Hopefully it all fits and everything works out well. Okay, it looks like we've got our fuse in there. Got to really kind of push it down in there. Use our tool here and an even push down on it. Let's move on to our next wire. Okay, we've got our ground connected to a bolt right there that the battery ground was connected to, as well as this, but I'm still trying to figure out where to put it. It says connect it to battery to power, so I'm pretty sure that I could connect it here and everything would be okay. I guess we're going to do it and see what happens. We used the ground bolt, which you'll find very easily. It's sitting right next to here for our ground. We used the power coming off the battery into the fuse box for our continuous power, which is right here. No, it's hard to see as well, but you'll see that bolt very easy. And we used fuse 12 for our red cable. We'll see if it works. Start the car. Radar's on. There we go. Our dash cam is on. 
GPS and green light is on, it is recording. recording will now start. Well, it's up and running. Everything's looking pretty good. The Allie just wants to go for a ride so bad. We're almost done, Allie. Let's turn this off. Open the door. It's still on. It's that's so weird. So I don't, oh, wait a second. No, it turned itself off. All right, we did it. It turned itself, so it just has a delay. Okay, so so it's, it, it stays on for a little bit after you turn it off. Just in time too, as the sun goes down. There's the installation, the hardwire installation of the Thinkware F800 into the Green Hornet. Pretty simple, pretty fun. We, we did everything, we're good to go. Now all we need to do is clean up our installation, which I'll probably just do tomorrow. I'll clean this up and do a little better installation of it later. But that's it guys. The next day. Okay guys, we're back, it's the next day in my apartment. Finished up pretty quick last night and we were needing to clean this up, so that's what we're gonna do. As you can see, we removed the tape that we had here. Got a wrench, going to loosen this bolt a little bit. And then we will put this around it and put our bolt back down. Sure you get it down nice and tight now our ground is cleaned up let's get in here work on this baby okay so if you look down here, right there is what we were using for our hot. That nut will not come off. So what I've done is I've stripped the wire even further. I twisted it together to where it's real nice and strong. I'm gonna wrap it around this post multiple times. I'm gonna get another nut, because there is enough threads on here to put another nut on top of it. I do not have another nut right now, so I'm just gonna put it on and tape it up, and we will leave it like that for now. As you can see, we've got a much cleaner connection. Our wire is heading right out that little box. I think that's going to be fine for now. When I have a nut, I can put a nut on top of that. For now, we'll just tape it up and we will be done. So if a quick little recap, your selectable fuse is right there. It's separate from the rest of them. I believe it was fuse 12 in the diagram. You want to tap into that one, get your continuous power from here and get your ground from that bolt right there. And you are good to go. Maybe zip tie these up next to your other cables here and that's it. Hope you dug it, hope it helped you. If it did, smash it with a like, hit that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. The Green Hornet, there she is, in the dark. We'll see you next time, keep going fast.